Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota, for the matchup between the St. Louis Cardinals and the Minnesota Vikings. And good afternoon to you. I'm Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire. I'd hate to be a defensive back today. I gave both secondaries last rights down there. They're <laughs> some of the great receivers in football. I would say about eight of them are, are on these two teams. The defense is really going to be tested on each side. It's going to be some matchup. They're just about ready to go, so let's get at it. Let's get Jim it. Jim Bakken has the ball teed up for the St. Louis Cardinals. Manfred Moore and Sammy White. And Back deep for Minnesota. Moore is the guy in the middle, and he's the guy that Bakken would like to avoid if he can. He's leading the NFL. Manfred Moore at the 11. With the wedge in front of him, he breaks to the outside, and that's the pocket. Oh, what a shot. Steve Jones down on the coverage for the St. Louis Cardinals. Two void goes out. Okay. Tucker's one of those guys who has that uncanny knack of just getting lost. And all of a sudden, he pops up in the end zone. <laughs> Third down and five at the 10. And Tarkenton making motions like he might run. Tucker had it and dropped it at the six. House will tee it up for Fred Cox. No good from the veteran. He's had 309 yards in his last three starts. That makes it tough to worry about Terry Metcalf when you worry about Morris too little. Ray Harris and Kane, the receivers, other than Metcalf, of course. Metcalf is number 21. Morris is the other running back behind Jim Hart. He's not messing around, is he? Hart fires deep, complete. I believe that's Terry Metcalf, it is. And the dangerous one, St. Louis at midfield. 9.59 left to play in the first quarter. No scores yet. And here is Metcalf again on the sweep to the right side to the 40. Inside the 40 to about the 37. Stopped by Fred McNeil and Jeff Wright. World Series man. First and 20 at the 47 for Jim Hart and the Cardinals. No score. Hart drops. Ike Harris on the reception. Stopped by Jeff Wright. And I think they're right. Hard on the draw play. Hard on the hurdle inside the 35 to about the 32. Hard again in a passing situation. Keep your eye on Metcalf. Comes out of the backfield. Down the middle to Morris. No score yet. Hart goes outside, cut down Metcalf. He wastes no time getting rid of it. Jim Hart with a good fake. Nate Allen on the coverage. 80 yards they went in 10 plays, and here's the climax. Six touchdown pass for Jimmy Hart, who no longer has to throw it all the time because he's got the good running game, and even the spike is quick. Everything Metcalf does is quick. Hey, that looked like dummy scrimmage. That looked like they were working out back in St. Louis. <laughs> Jim Bakken with Roger Worley holding. Flag goes down. The extra point by Bakken is good. First and 10 for the Vikings at their own 40. Pat Summerall with Tom Brookshire watching Fran Tarkenton go for Terry White. Picked off by Mike Sensabaugh, who's still in bounds. He hadn't been out yet. Sammy White from behind. Sensabaugh still on his feet. Cutting back the other direction. Mike Sensabaugh. Finally put down by Brent McClanahan and Doug Sutherland. Chuck Goodrum over to help out, too. The ball was not thrown very well, and Sensabaugh actually was just coming over on the throw. Here it is. Sammy White running straight up and didn't seem to put too much on. Nelson has a little bit of problem. Here's the comeback, and Sensabaugh gets his second interception in the last five or six days. He went 79 last Monday night. Pretty good run, too. Not bad for an Ohio Stater. Of course, they learn how to run under Woody Hayes, or they can't even go to school there. Now he's nailed. McClanahan put him down, and Jim Hart, the Cardinals have a first and ten in Minnesota territory. Mel Gray has it. Uh, Gray breaks back to the inside, breaks a couple of tackles. Down close to the 20, stopped by Jeff Wright. Up the Minnesota 23-yard line, first and 10 St. Louis. They already lead 7-0. Jim Hart gives to Metcalf. Metcalf looks like he might have some room to the outside. To the 15 he goes. 
Matt Blair and Jeff Seaman made the tackle. Metcalf and Morris, the two running backs. Hart fakes and fires. Down again. That's Wayne Morris, I believe. It is Wayne Morris. The Cardinals went 44 yards in five plays. They lead down 13 nothing. Morris's first touchdown catch, and the key to the fate is how quickly Jimmy Hart loads it up and throws it. Watch this. He doesn't take much time. The offensive line, by the way, is doing a superb job. Look how quickly he throws it. Wright's got his back turned. Morris gets number one. That will not be the last touchdown pass 24 is going to catch. Jim Bakken with Whirly Holding splits him. Makes it St. Louis 14. Minnesota nothing. We have nine minutes and 26 seconds left before the half and the Cardinals with their offense in high gear lead the Minnesota Vikings 14 nothing. At the 20, Jim Hart still the Cardinal quarterback. 14 nothing with 6.14 left to play before the half. Way ahead is Morris. Breaks a couple of tackles. Gets about six. <laughs> got a little bit. J.D. Kane has got blockers in front. More than enough for a first down. And big J.D. Kane rumbles down to about the 30. Jeff Wright finally got him down. But what a play by Jim Hart and J.D. Kane. The Vikings gambled with a blitz and did it backfire. Hart makes a quick read of it. Watch him now. He sees what's coming, particularly from the left side of your screen. And dumps it. Gober's going to the outside. Banks is on the inside. I'll tell you, Kane at 225 pounds is like a runaway locomotive. Watch Dober. Here he is. They said if they played after 12 o'clock midnight that Cardinals will be undefeated. He goes after anybody. Good block by Dober. Flag goes down as Metcalf cuts back inside, inside the 25. First and 20. Hart. Draw play to Metcalf, and again he gets a big chunk of yardage. Down the line to 30. Seven times for 47 yards. Morris comes in motion. Metcalf takes the pitch out. Morris out in front of him. Metcalf down to about the 21-yard line before he's tackled by Doug Sutherland. Very short yardage. For the St. Louis Cardinals, who lead Minnesota 14-0. In Bloomington, Minnesota. 3.39 left before the half. Steve Jones. One of the running backs. Straight ahead, Morris, touchdown. His second of the day. And it looks so simple. And here come the Blues again. Roger Finney and Bob Young on the left side. They just took Allen Page and Mullaney and buried him. Let's watch it. Page was on the nose. They just blew him right through there. And we've said earlier, he hits the line at full speed. He's flat out after two steps. 80 yards and seven plays for St. Louis. It is now 20 to nothing. St. Louis over Minnesota. The extra point is blocked. No good by Bakken. So the Cardinals lead remains at 20 to nothing. St. Louis leads it 20 to nothing. Parkin to drop straight back. Fires into the end zone. Almost picked off by Roger Worley. Sensibai went back into the corner too, didn't he? No, that's Roger Worley. Almost ended up on the pipe. Now he's sitting down on it. <laughs> Yard field goal attempt coming up here by Fred Cox. With Paul Krauss holding it. Cox drills it. Not good again. And again the blue. Welcome to Fred Cox. That's four in a row he's missed, including last week. The Vikings get there, and again, they get nothing. <laughs> When you win games in the last minute, like the St. Louis Cardinals, you gotta have heart. That's why we're called the Cardiac Cards. Hello, I'm Dan Deardorff, and I'd like to show you where I live and work. This fantastic gateway arch stands for the settlers and trappers who came through here on their way to explore America. Some of them stayed and passed on their pioneer spirit. That's why the arch stands for a new St. Louis, too. For our new stadium and a rebuilt downtown. For new riverboats on the Mississippi. New parks and fountains, and people enjoying their town. These people are United Way volunteers. Their neighbors, fans, and teammates working for the Boy Scouts, Salvation Army, and many other agencies funded by our local United Way. They're proud of the Cardinals, our city, and our United Way. I guess you could say they have the spirit of St. Louis. For all of them, we'd like to say thanks to you. It works for all of us, the United Way. Who's come trickling down the stands for Fred Cox? Cox lines 
drive kick into the back direction of Jackie Smith, I believe, for 81. Flies up inside the wedge. Cox didn't get it back to Metcalf. That was by intention, I'm sure. Oh, LaRue really got hit, but number 81 likes it, doesn't he? Leave now. The person of J.B. Kane, Jim Hart, and a first down at the 35-yard line. The Cardinals lead the Vikings 20 to nothing. First play of the scrimmage of the second half. First and 10 at the 35. Metcalf came in motion. Morris breaks into the secondary again. He got about 12 before Carl Eller made the tackle, and that's the first time we've mentioned his name today. Yeah, that's what he's done so far. First down to St. Louis. And again, it's Morris, and again, he gets four or five yards right straight ahead. Morris, Marshall at right defensive end for Minnesota, second and five. Hart gives it to Metcalf. He's got a good hole in front of him. Harry Metcalf shakes a couple of tacklers, gets inside the 35 to the 34. Again. Morris bangs to about the 30. Jeff Seaman made the tackle. 20 to nothing, St. Louis. Morris again gets the call, and look at this guy. Inside the five, fumble. Minnesota has it. Morris almost scores. The Vikings now have something to cheer about as they recover at about the two. It was Matt Flair who made the recovery. And only the fourth fumble that the Vikings have recovered all year. Right time. Nine. Cardinals make a blitz and a dunk. Talking to try to go deep. Move the outside. Picked off by Rocky Worley. Worley made the interception for St. Louis. And now Tarkenton hears the boom. The 12th interception for Fran at about halfway through the season. That's not a normal number 10 statistic either. He gets into a panic situation. Rashad running the out. Worley. Worley's like a bloodhound. Good cornerback. 10 nothing. First and 10. Uh, 20 to nothing. I'm sorry. Hart gives to Morris. And again, he finds some good running. 21. Cardinals have 191 yards rushing already. Page jumped. Here's Morris swinging to the outside and cutting it down the sideline. Out of bounds at about the 11 by Paul Kraus. Corey Evans has said, do not take prisoners because I'll tell you, they, <laughs> they're going for more. Oh, they look sharp. <laughs> Nothing doing this time as Alan Page, with that quickness, beat the blocks. No gain on the last play, so it's second and 10 at the 11. Metcalf swings around to the outside. He's going to score. He does. Into the end zone is Terry Metcalf. The ball came loose, but he was already in. They put Gray and J.V. Kane in the left formation, ran to the weak side, and made it look incredibly easy, and Carl Eller never showed up, neither did Blair. 35 yards in six plays, a touchdown by that guy, Terry Metcalf. Here he is. Banks goes onside, there goes Eller. Able to leap buildings with a single <laughs> bound. Jim Bakken will try. Worley holds and it's good. St. Louis now 27. Minnesota nothing. We have seven minutes and five seconds left in the third quarter for the Cardinals looking tough. Otis goes right straight ahead up the middle. Gets a couple. And uh, at eight, Otis got two on that last carry. Make it seven. Jerry Latin cutting back inside. Oh. Latin goes inside the 10 to about the six. The Minnesota seven. Cardinals already lead, 27 to seven. Jim Otis gets the call. And Otis gets all tangled up. Maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, stopped by Phil Wise. On second down, Hart calls the draw play to Otis, who cuts down to about the four. Scott Studwell filled the middle. 
Two minutes, 40 seconds now left to play for Jim Hart and the Cardinals. It's been a pleasant afternoon in Bloomington, Minnesota. They lead 27 to 7. He's earned it, I'll tell you. He was in St. Louis before Coriel when the people were yelling for his hide, too. And Jimmy Hart and this whole bunch have done a heck of a job. They're a team to worry about down the stretch. You bet they are. Third and goal. At the five, Jim Hart looking. He gives to Latin again, and Latin cuts back inside. Comes close. Jerry Latin, about Jerry Latin did not quite score. Two minutes left to play. St. Louis has a fourth down. Looks like about a foot to go for a touchdown. They lead already 27 to 7. You know, with the offense that the Cardinals have, their defense actually has spared a lot of problems because the Vikings have moved the ball at times pretty well. So they're down knocking again. Jones, Otis, and Latin, the running backs. Latin comes in motion. Otis fakes. Burrow straight ahead did not get in. Middle of the defensive line rose up to stop him. Jim Marshall, James White, and a bunch of others. Let's see if uh, Otis's foot slips. Now you're right on the line of scrimmage. Notice how they're down on the two-point stance on the line of scrimmage for the goal line. Straight ahead's all they want to think about. Purple wave came over the top. Here it is again, a different angle. Handoff, handoff wasn't real smooth. A new quarterback for the Vikings. That is Tommy Kramer, a rookie from Rice. Hasn't thrown a pass yet. This would be a tough place to load it up. First and 10 in his own end zone. Kramer throws out to Sammy White. White cuts back inside, gets to about the six. Kramer, as we told you before, has an excellent arm. Third down. That's the time remaining. Cincinnati comes here next week against Minnesota. Almost picked off by Eric Williams. Cardinal linebacker in good position. See this team in December. The team in red and white. Jim Otis spins back to the inside to stop by Scott Studwell. And now we're down to one minute left to play. Quarterback is Bill Dunkers, number 10. The other number 10 hasn't been a good day, has a friend. He's never been hurt, but I'll tell you, he feels he feels it right now. He is a very professional person. Clock runs away. Dunkers back to Otis. Otis shakes a couple of tacklers, gets down close to the 20. And that might be the last play of this contest. James White made the tackle. Don't forget, coming up next here on CBS, Brent, Phyllis, and Irv with scores and highlights of all the other games around the NFL today. Cardinals should be 10 just to let it run out. Bud Grant could have won his 104th game today. So the Minnesota record will drop to five and three. The St. Louis record goes to five and three. Tom, you have to give a lot of credit to all the Cardinals, but certainly Wayne Morris was very, very impressive. I like the St. Louis offense because it is extremely aggressive and it's nasty and it's uh, signs they're gone sometimes. They throw the ball in your face, but I'll tell you, they can play football. There goes Bud Grant. It's going to be a very quiet Minnesota locker room. I don't know. He might explode in that locker room today. Okay. This is Pat Summerall saying so long. For Tom Brookshire, now we get a CBS Sports Control and Brent Busberger. Big offensive lineman. You know, we usually talk to quarterbacks, right? Well, we're going to take you now to a couple of guys who do the dirty work. Bob Young and Conrad Dobler, the offensive guards for the St. Louis Cardinals. Gentlemen, welcome to the NFL today. Nice job this afternoon. Bob is 64. Dobler is 66, and uh, Bob, let's start with you. Why was it so easy today against the St. Louis Cardinals? You really dominated them. Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings, I think, who we played today. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I think the team, and we look upon ourselves as the leaders of the team, and for the Cardinals to do good, our offensive line has to dominate and set an example for the rest of the team, and 
Uh, it took us a few games this year to, for us to start doing that. We have done it, and uh, we've been winning lately. Hey, Connie, I wanted to ask you, this is Irv Cross there. Connie, you started out awfully slowly with that Cardinal offense. Everybody in preseason polls uh, felt that you'd have an explosive offense, but you started out with a fairly good defensive performance. And, uh, you know, what did it take to bring, bring it all together? Well, uh, Irv, I, I think the reason we started off real slow at the beginning there is because we have a tremendous wealth of backs in the backfield. And at the very beginning of the season, they wanted to try to find the perfect combination in the back the backfield and it was difficult to block for this guy or that guy you got to kind of get the feel of the game they finally after the third game said these are going to be our two backs and that's who we're going to go with and uh, we've been producing with them Conrad, did you uh, really score that touchdown on that monday night against the new york giants i've been meaning to ask you that question now you can tell us because it doesn't matter uh, that's what they say I did. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I did score it and it was quite a thrill. In fact, uh, right there afterwards, I even tried to kick the extra point, but <laughs> they uh, stopped it before it got, uh, they stopped the conversion. It was a very exciting moment for myself. Bob Young, how does it feel to beat the other guard on the St. Louis Cardinals? We're always talking about Conrad Dobler and his reputation as pro football's dirtiest player. Do you ever feel that maybe we overlook you, big guy, when you're out there? Well, you know, that's easy to do. Uh, it's hard to, uh, hard to push too many linemen on uh, one line. We have five very good ones, and uh, it's just hard to get uh, all the recognition for all five when you have so many of them. Uh, I'm right. used to it. Uh, that, the Strongest Man Contest gave me a little PR, so I guess that makes up for it. <laughs> <laughs> it indeed has, Bob Young, and congratulations to you and Conrad Dobler. Nice job this afternoon in Bloomington against the Minnesota Vikings, and good luck now as you pursue a spot in the playoffs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.